It's very common. In fact, atrial fibrillation is the most common abnormal rhythm that people have. It affects about two and a half million people in America alone, and the prevalence is increasing over time. And it's estimated that by the year 2030, about 5.6 million people in America will have atrial fibrillation. It's where the atria, which are the top chamber of the heart, quiver at a rate of roughly 400 beats a minute. You lose the contractility of that part of the heart. So patients are quite symptomatic. They have a reduced in their heart function, and they uh, feel palpitations, may feel dizziness, may even pass out in some patients. And 15% of all strokes are attributable to atrial fibrillation. So it goes beyond the cardiac condition itself, but the patients who have AFib are at risk of stroke. Well, atrial fibrillation increases with age. About 10% of people over the age of 80 have atrial fibrillation. And that's the reason why the prevalence is increasing over time as our population ages. Two general ways of managing atrial fibrillation. One is what is called a rate control strategy and the other is called a rhythm control strategy. A rhythm control strategy is where we're trying to put the patient back in normal rhythm and keep them in normal rhythm. And that's either through antiarrhythmic drugs that we had mentioned or ablation. The other strategy is a rate control strategy where we say it's okay for this patient to be in atrial fibrillation as long as we just control it. But in both arms, we have to address the risk of stroke. Atrial fibrillation is one of the heart rhythm problems that is very, very common that is managed by cardiologists and even internists. But there are some specialized arrhythmias that are pretty much managed primarily by electrophysiologists. In fact, if you look just here at UVA, if we look at our recent admissions to the hospital, 10 years ago, electrophysiology or heart rhythm problems made up probably less than 15% of all admissions. Now, I would say it's probably close to 40% of admissions are related to either heart rhythm problems or potential heart rhythm problems. So it's becoming more and more of an important uh, discipline within cardiology as a whole. We really have the ability to change patients' lives for the better. I think that's really what drove me, to be able to have the combination of being able to diagnose complex problems and to have the ability to treat them and many times uh, cure patients from their heart rhythm problems. We have a lot of technology that is designed to um, uh, reconstruct chambers of the heart, integration of our mapping systems with uh, imaging, CT, MRI imaging, uh, creating virtual geometries or shells that represent the heart, then incorporating those shells into the mapping system to do the ablation. There are new tools for ablation and robotic manipulation of catheters both uh, with magnets and with, um, and with uh, essentially like joysticks, like, um, like a video game in many ways. One of the new technologies is called Hansen uh, Medical Robotic Catheter Manipulator the, that was developed by the same folks who developed the Da Vinci robot, same principle, uh, but it's a robot that's used to, do, to drive and manipulate catheters. Usually it's, it's actually very easy to get the catheters to the heart, but the more precise movements can be delivered through this robot. The, the procedures for ablations can take some time, four to five hours, and wearing heavy lead next to fluoroscopy every day um, it can be st straining. But if that can be moved to where it can be done actually in a seated position with the same degree of accuracy and reproducibility, uh, that's really what the technology is after. And you can imagine from that, uh, with a lot of the mapping system we have, we have 3D navigation ability. So in the future, I can see robotic movement of casters, not even having to manipulate it yourself, but putting in coordinates on where the catheter needs to go. Without the technology, the whole field of electrophysiology ablation for AFib would not have been possible. And it wasn't possible five years ago to do this. Mm -hmm.